Uh, but let's end with uh, redistricting, right? That mm-hmm. uh, we're kind of uh, getting to the end of this process before it really even started for a lot of people. There's there's a lot of folks that still don't really understand that this is happening. Um, but the city council, uh, the planning commission, um, has put out uh, six different map options now for new city council districts that will take effect. You're looking at the sixth option. This is the most recent one that the planning department put out. You can see over here, this is kind of what the population changes would look like for you know the number of people in each of these districts. And this is the line where it's gonna be changing. We also built some some maps that you can go look at. Um, you can kind of flip through and see what the difference is. City Council likes this map the best because it stays closest to the way the districts currently are. And I should also just say as kind of like set up, you know, this is a required process under the city charter. Every time census data comes out every 10 years, they have to redraw the districts based on population to make sure that they're equally divided so, and all of that. And, and furthermore than just that, I mean, when we move to a district, council by district, like a districting government, uh, similar to a lot of other places uh, with like parishes and things like that, what ends up happening is even throughout the state, like you say, redistricting is happening. Um, so the redistricting will happen every 10 years based on census data, like you said, just so that things are level, because right now things are getting very much on level, especially in my district. I'm in district two. It's a lot of people in district two. And then three and four, I believe, have dipped. Uh, so the what what could possibly end up happening is like you could have certain districts with like 200,000 people and then another district with like 50,000 people. And that just is not representative of a collective voice. Uh, so that could be unfair to both sides, depending upon what is happening and who's listening and, and, and the functionality of it. Uh, so this is just the process. Uh, one of the things that a lot of residents, especially like here in Hope Village is saying, uh, because now it looks like we're going to go to District 5, which puts our district in the mix of having all the downtown uh, entities. So like that will put us uh, with uh, Henry Ford Hospital and Little Caesars Arena and the Fox Theater and everything else happening downtown. And then you think about a community like ours and some residents are like, you know, will we get those same considerations? Knowing now that we're competing against like, you know, downtown and i mean who's to say what this is a process that would not take place until the local elections which that's why we get on the pulse now so that we can definitely have some people aware as local elections happen in 2025 next year always after the presidential year our detroit local elections happen nothing but, changes till then just so people are yes, you know yes so people have been kind of worried about like your yes. your district is not going to change your council representative is not going to change until the next election which isn't until next year yep yep and, and i just wanted to deliver that nothing's going to change till then but they do need an amount of time to move to that district if they choose to move and live in or relocate or whatever may happen Happen because things are shifting. Um, so with that, as we get to a close, I want you to give another line on how they get in contact with you. This was real fun. We're going to keep this whole thing going. So much more to say about redistricting too. But for the most part, it's coming. It will happen. Look at those maps. And I guess get familiar for 2025. And also, if you're thinking about running for city council, you need to be very well aware of what's happening with the districts and where you live. Because that could play out where you're thinking, oh, I'm going to run in a in a lame seat, but no, nah, you, you you're going to be in the mix. So. Yeah, you got to you got to live in the district too. So that's part of why they're trying to get this done early to give people plenty of time to move into the places that they'll uh, want to represent. But um, this is going to happen fast. So public hearing is scheduled for 10 a.m. on January 23rd. That's next Tuesday, where people can weigh in, call in, and then a final vote is expected on the 30th, the following Tuesday, the last meeting of this month, and. There's also an online form that we have linked in our thing here where, where people can um, submit comments. But what's interesting is that really at this point, um, people are just kind of picking between the different map options. There's not really an opportunity to say, uh, could you move the boundary a couple streets over here or you know, make sure that I'm over here? It's they're, they're kind of tinkering with the, the actual lines is kind of over. Now it's about picking which of these options that has been put together is the best one. So people kind of have a limited ability to mm-hmm. you know, affect this. But I think what you've been talking about, about you know, does this affect my ability to get resources in the district? Does this kind of change um, you know, my representation in a, in a better or worse way? Like those are all the things that are really important. I think council has really put a priority on keeping things 
about as same as as they are now. So that you know, community development organizations and block clubs that have been working in partnership with the city and and each other aren't kind of disrupted by all of a sudden being in a district different district. Um, how much does that affect things? I'm also kind of curious about. I mean, if you are if you're moved into a new district, does that mean that you can't really leverage any of the relationships that you built with your previous council member? I mean, I don't, there's no rule really that somebody in a different district can kind of advocate for you, even though the, the council members themselves kind of make sure that the territory is divided as it should be. It's, you know, they take that representation of their, their area pretty seriously. Um, but the challenging thing, as you mentioned, is that you know, the east side districts have lost a lot of population over the yeah. last 10 years. So those districts have to get bigger or expand more westward to gather more people so that they have, you know, a, an equal number of folks in that district compared to the other ones. And that's made some of the kind of shifting around with those districts more on the it, west side. It, tough. It, it, and let me say this, and, and we are overtime, but not so long, but I do want to give this point too. Being in the city that we are, uh, where sometimes things feel as though they're always being taken away um, and no one's really fighting or advocating for the people. This is a sediment of many people. Uh, for, for any of these changes always seem as though we're going to get taken advantage of because a lot that has come has not necessarily heightened the quality of life throughout for many Detroiters. Um, and this may be more of an existential, philosophical, metaphysical question of the role that government plays in heightening the quality of life of others, or more so is the role on us as citizens to encourage the government to do that. That's that's a deeper philosophical question. With that being said, any of these changes definitely immediately trigger a lot of emotions of what's going to happen. So a lot going into things like people are thinking that you know, services will change. Um, it will have impacts on um, uh, all of the efforts that are that are moving forward. Um, I, I would I would argue and, and and plead with many of the CDCs and and organizers and people in neighborhoods and residents like our our tenacity towards our love for this city has to supersede whoever is in office because clearly our allegiance has to be to our own communities and our own neighborhoods. This sounds very altruistic, but we have to move in that, in that mythology because if not, you know, the hero complex of someone else advocating for us better than we can advocate for ourselves, I just don't think it's true. Uh, with that being said, now may be one of those times to draw better allegiances because they, there will be, I mean, even just putting myself reasonably in that position, it would be very difficult to uh, transition districts and then you find me cutting ribbons and advocating and, and at the council table always advocating for a district that I'm no longer in. When I have a new district, if I'm one of those residents, I'm going to say, yo, I want the same advocacy for me. So hence, encourage what that'll be. We'll, you'll know who your new council member is currently. That does not necessarily mean they'll be in office next time, but even more than a reason now to find someone in your group to possibly look at running for one of those seats themselves. Well said. Yeah. So with that. Yo, Malachi, Bridge tell them Detroit. how to get in contact with you. BridgeDetroit.com. We got free uh news that you can use uh good information <laughs> every day coming out we have newsletters you can sign up for if you don't like you know want to get on your computer every day get on your phone every day and type in bridgetroy.com i totally get that uh we'll send it to you we'll send it to your inbox if you sign up um you just you know go to bridgetroy.com put in your email address in our subscribe link and we'll get you hooked up um or you know follow us on social media um just look up rich Detroit on the accounts um but that's yeah that's the best way to get hold of us also my contact information is out there um, I don't know if you're going to put it up, but uh, mbarrett uh, at bridgetroid.com is my uh, Gmail account. So reach out anytime and uh, let me know what's going on. I didn't. I, I didn't this time in the scroll. Next week it's going to be in the scroll. And Lord knows, I can only imagine with the redistricting. We come in right hot in with more redistricting. We may actually even bring in a guest next week. I don't know. We're going to need some state out. people to come talk about that because that's going to be that's going to be really crazy. I mean, the, the House Speaker's district. Joe Tate, his district is getting redrawn. So what does that mean for all? I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be big. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. So with that, peace.